Hello and welcome. In this video we'll be creating Snake using HTML and JavaScript. It's going to be a very simple tutorial um, that's going to use pure JavaScript and HTML uh, and some CSS uh, to create the classic uh, Snake game. Not like the exact replica but just to teach uh, people how to create a Snake game. Okay. So let's get started. First uh, here we have a, an HTML file with uh, the doc type um, element and a style that has a, an ID selector for um, any t any ID that's called game canvas. It uh, positions it absolutely with uh, offset from the left 50% and the top 50%. Then it transforms it, uh, sorry, it translates it a negative 50% on both uh, x and y axis or in, on the left and the top. So it's centered, and then we have our title basically. Obviously, it's called Snake, and uh, we have a canvas. G gave it, we gave it the ID of Game Canvas that we use up here, and we gave it a width of 512 and a height of 512. You can use any width and height you like because our game won't like rely on any specific uh, dimensions. It, everything will be tweakable, and we just have an empty script element which we'll be writing our game in. If we go into our browser, refresh the results, here we have a uh, canvas that's centered in the middle of the screen but it's currently empty because we don't draw or clear anything on it right now so let's get started doing that first we need to define some constants first the constant is called canvas it's going to be set to document let get element by id game canvas and to make it a little bit easier for the ide to know what type is this uh, what type this constant is we're just going to use js docs and say that this is an HTML canvas element. Okay. And we have a const context, which is going to be canvas dot get context 2D. This context is going to be used for the rendering, drawing lines and stuff like this. Uh, then we'll have uh, three functions, one called update, one called render and another one called tech which is going to call the update function and the render function and then request an animation frame that calls the tech function again and we need to call it once the script is loaded so we did this and that's pretty much uh, the basic setup now we need to define a class um, that's basically going to act like a uh, a single way linked list and what a linked list is it's basically like a chain of um, elements each element in this list uh, isn't like an array or a normal list sequentially ordered or can be accessed by index no the linked list can only be accessed from each individual item uh, because each item holds a reference to the element before it and the element after it so as I mentioned before it's like a chain Okay, so our class is going to look something like this. We're going to have a class segment. It's going to have a constructor that takes an x and y and a direction. We're going to js dog this. X is a number, and, and y is a number, and the direction is a number. We can say this that x equals x, this that y equals y, this that direction equals the direction. Uh, then we're going to have another uh, variable that's not initialized in the uh, constructor. We're going to call it old direction and set it to this direction. Um, okay, it's going to be a number as well, so this needs not to be inferred. Um, then we're going to have a, a, a property or a variable called next, which is going to be set to null. We're going to js dog this uh, variable to be of type segment. Segment, okay. And we're going to have a function or a method called set direction. Or I think we can use the getters and setters. Yep. Um, we're just not going to do a getter. We might just go ahead and have a yeah. Let's make this a private variable. 
um, and we have a get direction that returns this direction and we have a set direction direction so this direction equals direction but before this we say this that old direction equals the current direction um, so yeah that's pretty much it we have a getter that returns the current direction and a setter that sets the current direction but uh, stores its value before changing it in this uh, property or field called old direction okay um, we can simplify this yeah I really can just go ahead and have a set direction only let's remove the getter yeah no need really to go direction equals this the direction yeah. much simpler um, let's go here and have a method called move which is going to handle the movement uh, logic of each segment and this is uh, basically the entire class for now I'm going to mark this as a to do and here we need a constant called root which is going to equal new segment and before we uh, create this we need to define some constants over here again we need to have a const segment width equals 32 for example you can use any width segment height equals 32 and we need to have another constant called columns equals canvas width divided by the segment width and const rows equal canvas height divided by segment height uh, but this means it's basically how many rows and col columns and rows uh, this uh, canvas will have because our snake is going to be moving snapped to each and every cell basically each segment of the snake is going to be snapped to this value over here um, so that's pretty much it for this constant we need to go down now and to add an element that's at the middle of the screen we're gonna go ahead and have um, columns divided by two rows divided by two and we have the direction set to zero which I'm going to have uh, zero equals up one equals down two equals left three equals right it's pretty easy to remember you can use any setup but this is just my personal preference and now let's add the rendering code for the elements let's go here con context the fill style sorry fill style equals back context dot fill rect so we now fill the entire canvas so canvas dot width canvas dot height we fill it with a black color and if you go into our browser now and let me just close the uh, explorer real quick and refresh the page you'll see that we have a black rectangle black square in the middle of the screen okay now to draw this element we need to basically iterate like sorry not to draw this element only to draw the entire snake we need to iterate over the entire chain and this is extremely simple all we have to do is define a variable and call it current segment and set it initially to the root and then we do a while loop and say while the current segment is not equal to null we select uh, the next segment in the chain and we set it to the current segment so basically this will keep moving down the chain until, the, until this becomes null which means it reached the end of the uh, chain itself great now we go here and we draw this so we say context dot style equals RGB 155 55 55 which is a nice uh, shade of red I kind of like you can use any color of course so we have context dot fill rect now um, and this is basically going to take current segment dot x times segment dot width current segment dot y times segment sorry segment height and we take segment width and segment height now if we go into our browser again and refresh the page you'll see our nice uh, red reddish uh, square in the middle of the screen let's close the developer tools 
and let's continue so now to the movement we need to do some checks which is basically very simple so we say this the direction we say if this the direction equals zero then we move upwards else if this the direction equals one is equals one which is down we move downwards else if this dot direction equals two we say this dot x minus minus which is basically moving to the left we say if this dot direction equals three this dot x plus plus and we need to update our old direction and set it to the current direction after we move and we need to do a check over here and say if this dot next is not equal to no so if we have an item connected to our segment or we have a tail basically from uh, this segment we say this dot next dot move we say this dot next dot set direction to this dot old direction so what we do here is basically move our child which is going to be recursively called and after we move it we set its direction to our old direction so basically I was moving up then turned right this segment is going to move up then turn um, um, right as well so the snake behaves correctly and we don't have to iterate over each and every single item of the chain because this is this basically does it automatically and in a simpler way uh, now for how we change the direction we need to use some sorry add some event listeners to the window so we key down we have an event we check if event with code or code equals key w uh, and we basically don't want our snake to be for example moving upwards and be able to flip its direction and move in itself downwards so we need to do a small check over here and we say if our root which is our head of the snake is currently moving upwards sorry is not currently moving downwards we can set root direction to upward otherwise we do another check over here if we press the S key we check if we're not currently moving upwards we set our direction to be downwards and then we check if we are not sorry if we press the A key we check if we are not moving to the right we set our direction to left and finally we check if we press the D key and we are not moving to the right sorry we're not moving to the left oh sorry uh, we set our direction to the right perfect and in the update function over here which uh, the function that updates our game obviously we don't really need to update each frame or sorry we don't need to move each frame we need to have kind of this uh, delay between the moves so to achieve this we're going to have to find a, ver a variable called elapsed frames and set it to zero and we check for example if uh, elapsed frames is more than 14 for example each 15 f uh, 15 frames we're going to move where you set this variable to zero otherwise we increment it and then we call root.move which is going to move the entire snake if we go into our browser and refresh this page you can see that we can move up down left and right but currently if our snake goes outside the screen it's gone for good now I would like to add the wrapping uh, so basically if I go outside one side of the canvas I go, I go in from the other and to achieve this we're going to do some checks so if this dot x is less than zero we say we set x to columns minus one so to the other side of the screen 
otherwise if x is greater than columns minus one so if we go outside the screen from the right we say x equals zero and same applies to the y but instead of using the columns we're going to use the rows okay if i refresh my browser now you can see that when my snake goes outside uh, sorry outside the top of the screen it goes from the bottom it comes out from the button and when it comes out from uh, sorry and when it goes outside from the right it comes uh, back from the left perfect now let's go here and um, add the uh, food items that we're going to pick up and to do this we know we need to define a variable called food x set it to zero and food y and set it to zero have a function called randomize food position we're going to set food x equals math sorry the floor math dot random times um, columns minus one and food y equals math dot floor math dot random times rows minus one so it will randomize the position of the food each time uh, sorry as uh, like randomize it each time we want let's call it uh, one time once the script is looted so the feed is initially placed randomly here we check if the root dot x equals food x and root dot y equals food y so if the head of the snake uh, touches the uh, the food item we randomize its position and we need to add another segment to the snake so this add segment function is going to be added right above uh, sorry, right underneath the input handling so we're going to have function add segment um, adding a segment is a pretty straightforward thing we need to like read it down here we need to iterate over the entire chain and get the last um, uh, ring or last segment in the entire chain and this is basically done like this so we say let last segment equals root so assuming that our last segment currently is the root we do a while loop and say while the last segment that next is not equal to null so while we still have an item connected to us we say last segment equals last segment dot next so we keep moving forward until we reach the segment that does not have a um, a tail or a segment connected to it so it basically once we reach the end of that chain this will stop so to add the new segment we need to first know at which position to add it so we need to define a variable called x offset and this offset basically means for example if we're currently moving to the right and we would like to add a segment we definitely need to add it to in the opposite direction which is left so this is achieved by doing a check so if this sorry if the last segment the direction equals zero so if we're moving upwards we need to add the segment to the bottom but if we are moving downwards we need to add it above us otherwise we there is no offset on the x-axis which means we're moving either up or down uh, sorry we're yeah, yeah here it means uh, if we're moving to uh, the uh, let's see again to the left we add it to the right and if we're moving to the right we add it to the left be sure to change uh, this line correctly because I wrote it incorrectly at the, the first time so the y offset is going to be the same if we're moving upwards add it to the bottom if we're moving downwards add it to the top perfect and we finally say last segment but next we set the last item in the chain which is currently null to a new segment so we say last segment dot x plus x offset last segment dot y plus y offset and set the direction to the last segment's direction and that's basically it uh, that's basically it for the segment addition code 
and we already called it over here so let's go and try it out let's refresh the browser let's refresh it again and again oh now we're getting a bug the food isn't being drawn yeah because we didn't uh, yeah we didn't add the food drawing logic again uh, so let's do go ahead and do it let's say to fill set the context fill style to be for example rgb 55 55 155 which is a nice shade of uh, blue or purple whatever let's go to context dot fill rect um, the current food x times the segment width and the food y times the segment height and set the width to the segment width and the height to the th segment height and if we refresh our page now see that we have a blue food item that we can pick up now as you can see we can pick up the food and we can grow in length and if we go outside the screen our tail will follow us which is perfect but currently we can pass through ourselves which is not the desired effect we need to lose the game if we hit ourselves so to implement this it's quite easy let's go ahead and web store let's add a variable over here or yeah a boolean over here let's say game that game over equals false and go all the way down here and say if not game over update so basically it's self-explanatory if the game isn't over request another another animation frame and uh, sorry otherwise do not do anything and uh, here after we move we need to iterate over the entire chain and check if the head is at the same position as any other segment so we say let current segment equals root but next yes, sorry. Uh, oh yeah sorry we uh, need to start at the second part of the chain and we say while current segment is not equal to no we check if the root x equals current segment dot x and root dot y equals the current segment dot y we break outside of the uh, for loop and set game over to true otherwise we continue setting the current segment equals current segment dot next if we go into the browser now and refresh let's try our game we eat uh, till we grow to a specific size just a little bit more and as you can see once we hit our tail the game stops running so that's pretty much it um, I hope you enjoyed the video I will leave a guest with the entire source code uh, in the description thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one